health and well-being, a comprehensive approach in 12 points, the Fontana Code for Healthy Longevity. Let's start. Number one, take action to reduce your waistline and importantly, you should increase or maintain your skeletal muscle mass, especially in the gluteal femoral region. Point two, be physically active. That means limit the time you spend sitting and move as often as possible. Do at least one hour of physical exercise every single day and try to alternate aerobic with strength, flexibility, and balance exercises. Point three, consume a healthy diet. That means consume a wide variety of minimally processed whole grains, legumes, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and fruits, possibly organic, okay? To reduce pesticides and herbicides exposure. Eat mostly proteins from plants, therefore legumes, whole grains, and nuts, fish and seafood, and low fat dairy products. If you wish to consume meat, so if you wish, you shouldn't, but if you wish to consume meat, choose lean cuts and avoid processed meat. Avoid, avoid ultra processed food and beverages, sugary beverages, rich in empty calories, sugars, and uh, fats. Choose and prepare foods with little salt. Use iodized salt to promote thyroid health. As a dressing, use extra virgin olive oil in moderation. One tablespoon of olive oil is 120 kilocalories. So you have to be very careful if you don't want to gain weight and avoid animal fats, butter, cream, lard, tropical oils like coconut palm, and most importantly, partially trans fatty acids, partially hydrogenated fats, trans fatty acids. Number four, if you are overweight or if you are struggling you know, to maintain a low waist circumference, waist circumference, these are some tricks that you can employ. Number one, leave the table when you are 80% full. Number two, once or twice per week, consume only raw or cooked vegetables or beans dressed with two tablespoons of olive oil, lemon or vinegar and spices. Number three, eat all your food within a consistent window of eight, 10 hours, and therefore don't snack. And finally, eat your food slowly because it's been shown to independently reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome. Number five, limit or better avoid alcohol consumption. If you don't drink, don't start to drink. That's the best advice. But if you choose to drink, minimize consumption to prevent cancer, cardiovascular disease, and neurodegeneration. So if you want to drink, drink not every single day. No, a few times, a couple of times per week. Number six, do not smoke. Do not use any form of tobacco, including e-cigarettes. They are killing you. Number seven, treat your skin to a healthy amount 
of moderate sun exposure, moderate. 10, 15 minutes per day, full body has been shown to be very healthy. Again, treat your skin daily to a healthy amount of moderate sun exposure. Avoid, avoid excessive sun exposure and sunburns and do not use sun beds. And in winter time, unless you're living, you're living close to the tropics, you should take a vitamin D supplement, supplement because this is very important to keep your plasma levels of vitamin D optimal. And this has multiple consequences. First, you know, it's important for your bone health to prevent osteoporosis. And a recent study has shown that a randomized clinical trial that uh, 2000 units per day of uh, vitamin D supplementation over five years was uh, responsible for a 20% reduction in autoimmune diseases. Number eight, sleep. Sleep is a powerful medicine. Try to sleep at least seven hours a day because sleep is healthy is important to reduce brain inflammation, to, to get rid of waste, and to consolidate memory. Number nine, nourish your mind. Very, very important. Never stop learning. You should keep stimulating your brain plasticity by always acquiring new skills and abilities, learning new languages, reading, poetry, music, anything that is going to keep improving this brain plasticity. Nurture your emotional, intuitive, and creative intelligence, again, by engaging in a number of activities that are important to increase your emotions, intuition, and creativity. Remember that all these activities are forcing certain part of your brains to boost uh, synapses, synaptic networks that are growing and they are becoming predominant. So the more you do something, the more your brain, certain areas of, of your brain get hypertrophic and they are able to do all these activities as a common part of your life. And very important, cultivate self-control, mental equanimity, optimism, and happiness. Again, to reinforce these uh, uh, synaptic networks. Number 10, nurture friendship and brotherhood. This is extremely important. Friends, family, connection is very important for our well being, uh, mental health, immune health. So take care of your relatives and friends with love and dedication. Don't be egoistic. Cultivate altruism and develop the art of peace and compassion. These are key for human well-being. Number 11, interiority is the place where one takes care of oneself. Therefore, carve out time. You should carve out time for meditation, for engaging in artistic activity and philosophical studies because interiority is the place where one takes care of oneself. Learn to live in the present and according to your own inner nature, aligning your thoughts and actions with the flow of life. This is an art that you know you cannot read on a book, you have to practice, learn, practice, learn, and focus to build confidence, inner strength, and a noble purpose in life. These are extremely important for your well-being, much, much more than wealth, power, having a lot of cars and houses and money. 
believe these are essential for health and well being. And finally, I think the most important, because our lives as human beings depend on nature, love and respect nature. It's important to get in touch as much as possible with nature. Try to immerse yourself in nature as often as possible, you know. Go and walk in a, in a wood and uh, and you know, on on the on, in, in, on the sea. Have walks in the middle of nature. It's very important to connect and regenerate. You should protect the environment. You should do everything you can to learn how to protect the environment. And again, it's essential for human beings to learn how to love and respect mother nature we in the last few decades we have we we are destroying and devastating so many natural habitats climate polluting oceans and rivers and air and land that's not possible this is not sustainable if we want that our kids and grandkids they're going to have a future on this planet so these are my 12 points that i distilled over many many years of medical practice scientific studies and reading of many articles books and discussion with friends in academia around the world and uh, if you like, please share, you know, this video with your friends and most importantly, take action, take action to become a healthier and better and more altruistic, compassionate and loving human being. If you're interested in these topics, I have created a YouTube channel. This is, you know, the address of my YouTube channel. And uh, I have created several uh, uh, chapters, several, several uh, you know, different topics uh, where you know I discuss about, you know, I post about important, I post videos about new scientific news on health and promotion and longevity as I read articles in the top medical journals that I believe are important. I create some videos, short videos to discuss these novelties. Then there is a one on uh, where I, I collect, you know, the interviews and lectures I, I gave to major university institutes around the world. Then there is one on nutrition, one on uh, physical exercise, one on whole food, plant-based diets, another one on emotional health, mindfulness, meditation, sleep, and slow breathing. And then there is one on philosophy of well-being, and there is one on lifestyle and promotion for environmental and planetary health. Thank you for listening, as always, and. Uh, I'll see you soon with the next video. Have a nice day.